This lesson takes a closer look at directory entries and explains how linking works. As you know, a directory is a disk file that contains a list of the names of files and other directories. Along with the name, each item in a directory has an index into the inode table which contains information on the file itself, including how big it is and where it's located on disk. You can see how, with this arrangement, the same file can be listed in different directories. It could even be listed several times in the same directory under different names. In the original version of Unix, a directory was nothing special, it was just another file. It's still like that today on some systems, but on most modern file systems, a directory is implemented as an integral part of the file system itself for efficiency and safety. But the fundamental operations that you can perform on it make it appear to be nothing more than a data file. Your interactive Linux session keeps one directory in its memory. This is known as the current directory and is the default directory for all operations. For example, if you don't specify a directory name on the ls command, it lists the files and directory names listed in the current directory. Now this is nothing more than an alphabetic listing of the names found in the current directory. I have my system configured so that certain options are always supplied to ls and those options mark the names of directories with a trailing slash character. Whenever I enter ls, the a and f options are automatically added to it. It executes like this. I'll be showing you how to do that later. Right now, let me show you how to create a new directory. The mkdir command creates a place on disk for the new directory, allocates a new inode for it, and inserts that inode along with the name you supplied in the current directory. The cd command can now be used to make the new directory the current directory. And as you can see, this directory is empty. There is a command called touch that can be used to create a new but empty file. This command will create the new file named no data here in the Fred directory. You can see that the file exists and has zero length. You can use touch to create a new file this way, and you can also use it to set the modification date and timestamp of an existing file to the current time. Anyway, we now leave this directory and see if it still contains the file. Now the ln command can be used to create a new link in the current directory. The S option is used to make this a symbolic link. That is, the name Herbert is inserted into the current directory, but as a special entry in the directory that does not contain an inode. Instead, it contains the name of another directory. The LS utility shows us its type as an at sign, like this. In all other respects, it can be treated just like a directory. Notice that both directories Fred and Herbert contain the same file. But Fred is the real directory. Herbert is just a symbolic link to it. Because Herbert is only a symbolic link, it depends on the existence of the directory named Fred. We can remove the Fred directory and all it contains with the rm command and the recursive option this way. Now Herbert no longer links to anything and will just show up as a file instead of a directory with something in it. Because Herbert is a symbolic link, if Fred were to reappear, the link would be valid again. Let's create a data file containing a single line of ASCII text. Now we can create a link to it this way.
Now these two files are the same. Changing the contents of one will change the contents of the other. Now this is not a symbolic link. The two file names in the directory have exactly equal footing. If we delete one, the other will remain. For example, the original file is gone, but the new one, the one that was created later as a link, is still there. You will see many symbolic links to directories and hard links to files throughout Linux. As you become more familiar with the system, you'll learn some reasons why this is a very handy thing to be able to do.